Hey traders, welcome back to another video here. Wanted to take a little bit of an opportunity here to get set up for the week ahead in terms of markets. I wanted to go over one of my current positions that I've been trading, uh, as well as some things that I'm looking for going into next week. So I wanted to start out with, of course, uh, a winning trade that I have currently, which is the S&P longs that we took inside of the group this past week. Um, inside of Discord, I went long. Uh, now, full transparency, I attempted to go long around these areas, and I stopped out pretty quickly when price fell apart. I then re-entered as markets came into a support structure on the higher time frames, and this secondary trade ended up being uh, a lot better, right? So you could see I looked left and I liked this area of support. This was a very strong point on the chart for the S&P, uh, for the index, uh, it, it rallied from there. And so my initial entry actually went against me. But fortunately, my stop loss placement here was robust enough, I guess, to keep me just barely in the trade. So initially, my stop loss is here now, you can see I've trailed it into profit. But initially, my stop loss was just below market structure. I was able to survive the temporary drawdown on the trade, and then price was able to actually rally back. And uh, basically, on Thursday, we had this beautiful run up, uh, big break to the upside. But then once we sort of put in this higher low concept right here, where we saw, again, uh, the, the market rally from there, I was able to, on Friday, actually lock in a stop loss. So this is where I'm at with a current trade. And again, I shared this inside of our Discord channel. Um, I'll show you guys what that looks like in just a second here. Let me pull it up. So I took the trade on the S&P. And again, when we had that crazy jump uh, on Friday, when we were floating about $2,400 in profit on this trade, I was able to trail stops into, uh, into the green there. So looking to see if we can catch more. I have been trading the indices for several years now, um, and they are finally back in a place where I feel like the market is strong enough, bull case enough for me to actually get back into sort of doing my active trading. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. I've been trading the S&P long several times in the past couple of weeks. Uh, again, going back to my to my roots in terms of what I like to trade most. I've always been an index trader at, at my heart. Uh, of course, I'm still doing currency trading as well, but where the majority of my trading capital is allocated is usually in the indices and also gold. So I wanted to talk about gold here a little bit. What happened with gold last week was very, very interesting. So we actually saw gold trade sideways for much of the week. We saw price really struggle to get past get past 2010. We attempted uh, on 426, this is April 26th, but then we consistently pegged the bottom over and over. So I'll actually pull up my trading view for this. Uh, we are gonna look at some other charts here. By the way, quick mention about Bitcoin. We are actually adding Bitcoin to the edge finder. For those of you who are edge finder users or fans, get ready. I'm super excited to finally have some crypto on the uh, the the edge finder there. Anyways, going back to that concept on gold. So I've been bullish on gold and I'll, and I'll give you my case for that fundamentally in just a second. But first we'll talk technicals. Again, 2010, super stubborn level. Bulls were not able to get above it. And again, bears were not able to break this low. Uh, I, I, Frank and I were discussing, Frank, if you guys are not familiar, he comes on the live shows pretty often. He also works uh, at my company, A1 Trading. He's on the design team for the Edge Finder and also a fellow trader. Him and I have been trading for, I guess, the better half of, you know, half decade here now together. Um, but anyways, gold struggled to break either direction. We were making the case that if this level breaks, there's a good solid chance we probably see a move down to 1950. And I still think that that is the case, though, I'm not looking to participate on the short side. I'm only interested on the long side. Now you may ask why, if the technicals break bearish, why not get short? Well, again, I am not purely a technical trader. I do like technical charts. I use them in all of my trading, but, but I like to incorporate fundamentals and sentiment and what big money is doing, which brings me to a really important point. When we look at current uh, readings for the gold market on the edge finder, we can see that we get a plus four score, which equates to a buy rating. Let's go dig deeper into that and we'll take a closer look. So I'm gonna go into commodities and go to gold. Again, cause I'm, I'm trying to reevaluate. I have been wanting, I've been looking for a gold long trade for probably two weeks now. I haven't been able to find it. And I'm kind of glad because I maintained, I've been able to stay out of this chop, which this chop for me as a trend follower mostly means losing trades. So I've been avoiding that. I haven't been taking any trades on gold. I've been looking for the breakout. And even though I haven't traded or made any money trading gold recently, I have very much, I think, done an okay job at avoiding 
the the ugliness that has been this 2010 to 1980 mark regardless let's take a closer look at gold we are going into the month of may gosh that's crazy how may is already upon us uh, may is a very slightly positive month expectancy for the gold market i want to take a close look at the cot da cot data so this is where things get interesting because so what we do, what we focus a lot with our software is we focus on what institutions are buying and selling. And currently, there's still a very heavy long ratio when we look at gold. In fact, I want to go take a look specifically at the Smart Money Tracker to take a look at this. So if we look at gold, look at this. Gold, did gold? No, okay, interesting. Look at this. So here's our most recent, for those of you who are COT advocates like myself, the most recent filing here shows that gold had a decrease in long, but also a decrease in short. Now, notably, what I would say about this is that we did get a decrease, but it's not necessarily, you know, this is decreasing in longs and we get a massive increase in shorts. There's kind of a, it seems, taking money off the table on both sides of the trade. Now, if you're not familiar with what I'm looking at, this is the COT report data on our Smart Money Tracker page on the Edge Finder. I run a company where we build software tools for traders, and this is essentially one of our more popular features and one that I use a lot, which is tracking smart money through the COT numbers that we get each week. So the COT shows long contracts versus short contracts and their most recent change. So what we can see is that there's still a heavy preference for the long side when it comes to institutional traders. When we look at gold, though, we saw a slight dec decline in each angle, both, lo both long and short contracts. So kind of an interesting thing there. Despite that, it doesn't change too much about my outlook on gold. I'm still overall bullish if we can get breaks. Part of the reason here, you can take a look at some notable things that we talk about often. Inflation's still at 5%. This is, of course, uh, in our view, a bullish reading for gold until that inflation becomes less of a problem. I'm just going to maintain a general bullish outlook on gold. So we have a bullish category there, right? Unemployment has been very, very strong, showing some economic strength. This has kind of been bearish in our view for gold. If we take a look at interest rates, interest rates at 5%, uh, still very high, of course, uh, that, that we consider especially a rising in interest rates, still has some downward pressure on gold. Despite that, though, we're taking, we're taking a look at an aggregate here. We're looking at the summation of the total of all of these scorings. So you're going to have some things that print bearish. But as long as most things for us print bullish, that's where we actually get confirmation. So I have a strong, I have, I have a buy preference personally going into this upcoming week. So if you're watching gold with me, what I'm looking for, I've said it again and again, but I'm waiting patiently for it, is a break of that 2010 mark. And then I'm looking for a potential move up to 2045. If we get the break to the downside, I'll stay out of the way, right? I just won't trade it. Uh, I won't be short. I won't be long. I'll just be waiting for some signs of life, if you will. I wanted to take a quick look at Bitcoin. I don't have it quite ready on the edge finder. We are still in construction mode, but I just wanted to look at Bitcoin because I do actually have, and I'll show you my position on Bitcoin. I am still in the red with Bitcoin, so I'll pull up Bitcoin's chart here. So I've been long on Bitcoin for a little bit. This is not necessarily a short-term trade. I've been in it for a while. I'm just holding on to uh, what I would consider a longer-term trade with the full preparedness to add to my trade if Bitcoin goes down. I have a relatively small position on my trading account. Uh, this is something that I'm not, it's more of a really more of a swing or a position trade than a short term trade. Um, so my concept with Bitcoin is I think that there is potential if the Federal Reserve sort of continues to uh, see inflation decline, that we could get easing in terms of uh, monetary loosening kind of concept, right? Where we've seen rate hikes and rate hikes and rate hikes. Now we could start to see pause or perhaps even rate cuts. If that happens, I think we have a huge upcase for the Bitcoin market. So I'm taking a risk here, but I think that there's potential. And again, it is a small component of the trading account, something that I'm watching. I do also have the queues. This is the NASDAQ. So for, for the Forex traders out there, if you're using a Forex broker, this is the same thing as NASDAQ. As 100. I've got this one long as a sort of a longer term uh, position as well. This one, I think I got a pretty incredible entry. Uh, this one's floating about 1800 bucks. So it was a, it was not, it was also to be completely honest, it was a very small position on the account as well. Uh, it's just that I've been holding it for a while. So it's, it's I've been able to really run. So that's been cool to watch. I want to go back to the watch list here for a second. Um, we'll do currency pairs probably more so on tomorrow's video. Uh, so I'm going to stick mostly to uh, 
uh, the indices, gold, etc. here for today's video. So um, I do wanna mention also, by the way, guys, that this is the final week of our sale on the Edge Finder. If you guys are not already using the Edge Finder and you have interest in getting access to it, this is the time. Those of you who made it this far to the end of the video, I wanna make sure that you do not miss this sale. Um, I know, you know, Nick, why are you selling something so hard? It's because we genuinely believe in the product that we're building. We want people to use it and this sale is ending. So if I if I get messages next week and they're like, hey, I missed that 40% off, can I get it? You know, our team is not gonna be able to do that. So if you want access to the tool, you get access to our smart money tracker, the retail sentiment indicator, the bank signals tab, our watch list, signals for 30 plus assets and pairs, and the best part, it's a one-time payment. So you don't pay monthly, you don't pay any of that. So you pay one time, you get access to the tool uh, for good. And again, we are always here to support you along the way. Um, and if you're interested in that, use code YTVIP. You saw it on the screen there a second. Click this link in the description and then use that code YTVIP. It's gonna get you 40% off. And again, that is ending tomorrow. So tomorrow is the last day to get access to the Edge Finder for our 40% off one year celebration sale. We've been in uh, in the game doing this, building software for about a year. We've been a company for longer than that, but we've built the Edge Finder the last one year. We're celebrating again our one year milestone, which has been, you know, it's been a big success. We've had a lot of people really love the tool. So we're trying to, again, offer future updates and all that sort of stuff come with it free. So as we continue to build onto this amazing tool, the price will go up. So this is sort of a last chance to get access to it for this price. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you back next time. Thanks.